For thousands of years, orangutans have lived isolated lives in the rainforests of Asia. Today, we are just beginning to discover their secrets and to explore our kinship. One of the most popular exhibits here at the San Diego Zoo is the orangutans. What is it about these apes that intrigues us so much? Orangutans are extremely intelligent, graceful, mysterious, and one of our closest relatives in the animal kingdom. But they're also one of the most endangered species on the planet. Today, incredible efforts are underway to ensure their future. But are we too late to save the magnificent red ape? Major funding for nature is provided by Park Foundation, dedicated to education and quality television. Major corporate support is made possible by Canon, providing the power of imaging to express your visions at home and work. By Ford Motor Company, each year parts for our new vehicles are made from more than 50 million recycled soda bottles, enough to cover a 400-acre lake shore to shore. Ford dedicated to protecting the environment and by TIAA Craft for 80 years the thoughtful choice in financial services for people in education and research TIAA Craft ensuring the future for those who shape it nature is also made possible by annual financial support from viewers like you This young orangutan named Karen was born with a hole in her heart. She's about to undergo an operation to save her life. Uh, no whirlpool. The surgery is taking place at the San Diego Zoo and the patient is prepared under strict hospital guidelines. Today, Karen will undergo open heart surgery. This operation, one of the first of its kind, is drawing media attention. Karen has had a tough life so far. Her mother was unable to care for her, so she was taken out of the group to be hand raised. Because of her heart condition, she was sick and underweight. Let's move a record too. At only two years old, she faces the risk of a fatal heart attack. But hopefully, today's surgery will send her on the road to a healthier life. Most of the doctors had never worked on an animal before, but the bodies of apes and humans have a great deal in common. In fact, our hearts are virtually identical. Once the incision is made, the surgery is the same as if this were a young child. Karen had a large tear in her heart the size of a penny. In order to repair it, her heart had to be stopped and her blood pumped through a heart-lung machine to keep her alive. The surgical team included two world-famous heart surgeons, nurses, veterinarians, and keepers 
as many as 100 people were involved in this historic operation. Now you need to start sort of heading down. Wait a minute, Joe, this is, this is starting. Pretty, huh? After the hole in her heart is repaired, the surgeons have to get it to start beating on its own again by giving it a jump start and waiting. Her young heart beats again. After seven hours, the operation is a success. But Karen is not out of danger yet. The next few hours are critical. Karen will be carefully monitored until she wakes up. Finally, she opens her eyes, still groggy from anesthesia and a little unsure where she is. She's having trouble breathing and has to use a respirator. Karen is brought to a special intensive care unit for round-the-clock care and a long rest. Although Karen's surgery went smoothly, her recovery had some troubling complications. Her lungs were filled with fluid and she developed pneumonia. For the next two weeks, she will be watched day and night. Karen's operation was very costly and time consuming. Why make such an enormous effort trying to save just one orangutan? The answer lies in the fact that there are so few of these magnificent apes left in the world. They are one of the most endangered species on this planet. Orangutans live in the steamy tropical jungles of Southeast Asia. Their name means people of the forest in Malay, which they were given for their incredible resemblance to our own species. Compared to the other great apes, we're only just beginning to learn about these amazing primates and to fight to save them from extinction. Orangutans are perfectly adapted to life in the rainforest. Their bodies move with grace and ease through the canopy. They use their great intelligence, ingenuity, and memory to search for food. But the problem is, the forest is disappearing. Orangutans once lived throughout Southeast Asia, but today they can be found only on two islands in Indonesia, Sumatra and Borneo. In just the last 20 years, their population has been reduced by at least 30 percent. Now at this moment they are critically endangered, yes. And that is because of uh, fragmentation as we call it. A lot of big populations have now been broken up into very small units. A lot of orangutans are desperately running around because they can't find food anymore. Orangutans need to spread out because rainforests cannot support a high density of these large fruit eaters. But as human populations expand, they are being squeezed into smaller and smaller areas. On the island of Borneo, orangutans have managed to hang on to pockets of forest. Here, villagers live along the many rivers, the island's highways, fishing, hunting, and farming. 
But the biggest threat to the orangutan and all the wildlife here doesn't come from the local villagers. It comes from the worldwide demand for timber. The rainforests of Borneo contain some of the most prized timber trees in the world. The result of this booming business is total devastation of the rainforest. This entire area was once covered by enormous trees. Rainforest destruction is the biggest threat to the orangutan's future. In the past two decades, it's estimated that their habitat has shrunk by more than 80%. Today, many orangutans live in forests protected by law, but these are often logged illegally or mined for other natural resources. In some places, the damage is so great that the land spontaneously bursts into flames because coal, once buried under soil, is now exposed directly to the sun. The government of Indonesia is working on better methods to control this problem, but for now, the apes often have nowhere to run. The forest where this orangutan used to live has been turned into a mining camp. The staff has been feeding her, but they can't take care of her much longer. They've called for help. Homeless orangutans, displaced by loggers and miners. These are some of the many problems Chris Warren deals with every week. Chris is a veterinarian at the Juan Arrested Rehabilitation Center in Kalimantan, Borneo. We receive orangutans from all over Kalimantan not only in Kalimantan, but now there's a registered list of confiscated orangutans from Java, um, from other parts of Indonesia as well. We've received them from Manado, Bali, also from outside of Indonesia to other places that they've been smuggled, such as Taiwan. Rehabilitation centers like Wanaresit have been set up to rescue orangutans who no longer have a forest to call home, or those who have been kept illegally as pets. Dr. Willie Smits is one of the founders of Wanarusset. The orangutan project itself started when I came across a dying baby orangutan at the marketplace in Balikpapan. It was just appalling. So at night I, I came back, I took that little baby orangutan, so I got stuck with an illegally kept orangutan. First I thought I might end up with something like seven orangutans. But once we started in the first year, already more than 20 orangutans uh, showed up from just Samarinda and Balikpapan, and it became clear that the project was going to be a completely different scale. Today, one arrested is filled to capacity, and there is a long waiting list for space. <laughs> Many orangutans at this facility were rescued from the pet trade. Usually um, the process um, in order to obtain a baby to sell in the black market is to kill the mother, which involves um, often a rather brutal slaughter. Usually the mother's shot, often the baby's killed in the process. Even if the baby survives and is brought to one arrested, its future is far from certain the loss of their mothers and the trauma caused by poachers can be devastating. The stress of this upon a youngster like, like Constance here is, um, is, is great and, and very few actually survive. 
The new arrivals have to be put into quarantine because they often carry diseases and infections, such as TB and parasites, that they have caught from people. This youngster has just received a clean bill of health. But before he can join the group, he must have a rigorous scrubbing from head to toe. Though it may be a difficult few moments for him, it's a final precaution. The staff wears masks to protect the apes from any contagious diseases. But Wanarusset doesn't just rescue and care for orangutans. It gets them ready to be released back into the wild. After quarantine, the next phase is a period of socialization. These youngsters would normally learn all they need to know from their mothers. But at Wanarusset, these orphans have a substitute. I'm a biologist and I start work in this project in April last year. I'm a mother for my 90 babies in here, and I also to uh, work as a researcher in here. Rondang Sirigar helps the youngsters learn how to survive in the wild. All the things their mothers would have spent years teaching them. After years of training at this unusual school in the jungle, these orangutans will soon be able to survive on their own. This is also a time to make friends. These youngsters eventually will be released together. Having a companion, a buddy, will help them cope with their new life in the forest. No matter where they live, baby orangutans need lots of nurturing and attention. Two weeks after surgery, Karen's condition has greatly improved. Her uh, appetite's really good. She's thirsty and she's pretty bright. She's, she's looking around, you know, checking stuff out. The first day she was off the respirator, she was still pretty slow. She's much stronger, too. Once in a while when she doesn't like something we're having to do to her. She can put up a pretty good fuss now. She really likes being held. That's like the biggest bonus out of this whole affair for her, I think. <laughs> She's, it's like a dream come true for her to get held all the time. After Karen has completely recovered from surgery, she's given some time to get used to her enclosure before she rejoins the group. Keeper Mike Bates joins Karen for a while to reassure her. Later on, Karen was returned to her group and was adopted by a young female. Today, she's a healthy five years old still living at the San Diego Zoo and still charming everyone who lays eyes on her. Zoos go to great lengths to keep their orangutans healthy both physically and mentally. The National Zoo in Washington, D.C. has developed a most unusual program. Every day, a few orangutans head off to work in slow but deliberate orangutan fashion. They're involved in a special project, part of the zoo's new exhibit called Think Tank. Until fairly recently, it was believed that only humans were capable of language, but chimps, gorillas, and a few orangutans are now showing us that we are not alone after all. Hi. Hi, you want to do a few more questions? Let's see, that's not it. Okay, it's this. You see those? Want to answer? Try one more time. 
Excellent. Can you use your send key? Good, good. Within okay. Think Tank is a computer-based language system uh, that allows the orangutans uh, to express their thoughts using written symbols. Look up there too. These Pick amazing there. apes are okay. using a computer to communicate with Excellent. Rob. Good. Can you use your send key? Excellent. Good job. The individual that knows the most symbols is AZ, our adult male, who's 19, um, and he uses seven different symbols. Hey, AZ. The orangutans are learning a vocabulary of symbols that represent food or objects. Then they'll move on to verbs, adjectives, and numbers. Rob believes they will eventually be able to use these symbols to communicate with him in a sophisticated way. Good job. Really good. Excellent. So I would like to ask our orangutans to use this system uh, to explore questions about how they see the world, how they see things. Uh, really, to me, it's a vehicle for finding out about their cognitive skills. Okay, look. Rob also devises thinking experiments to investigate the orangutan mind. Here he places a peach inside a box locked with four different locks. Watch out. The visitors in Think Tank wait to see what Enda will do. Wait, come here. Okay, you go to work, okay? What was interesting to me is how did each one of them solve it? Inda spent a lot of time pounding and pulling and biting and ripping and so on, which is a, a, a totally appropriate way to go about solving the problem for an orangutan. If she can't get it with some effort initially, and maybe even with a, a little bit of trying, she tends to try and bust through the problem. But eventually, Enda calms down and figures things out. Then it was AZ's turn. AZ, of course, uh, came in and threw the box around a little bit. But then I noticed that it was only a couple minutes and then he sat down and investigated things very carefully and took some time to try and figure out the locks. Uh, and he did. So just how smart are orangutans? I think they have very powerful minds and very powerful intellects. Um, certainly all the great apes are bright and intelligent and inquisitive, but I think orangutans show it off um, in a way that, that at least we would describe as um, very contemplative, um, inquisitive, and persistent. Raising intelligent animals like orangutans can be very demanding, especially when it comes to caring for their young. These inquisitive primates need lots of mental stimulation and lots of attention. If their mothers are unable to care for them, they have to be raised by people. Here at the Wilhelma Zoo in Germany, Gundi Scharpf is the keeper in charge of the primate nursery and a foster mother for all the orphans. The youngsters are also raised together to help them learn how to relate to other members of their own species. Although there's no substitute for the real thing, Gundi tries to give them the love and security that their mothers would normally provide. In the wild, baby orangutans are raised solely by their mothers.
These apes have one of the longest childhoods of any animal. They have to learn just about everything they'll need to know from their mothers, an education which takes about six to eight years. This long childhood is essential to the youngster's survival. Since these apes are mainly solitary, they must learn to be totally self-sufficient. By observing their mothers for years, they learn what fruits to eat, where to find them, and when they ripen. It's as if they develop a detailed map of the forest and a calendar to tell them when to visit a particular tree. Studies of orangutans in the wild have provided details of their complex lives and vital information to help conservationists protect them. Today, zoos have also joined the fight to help the orangutans, coordinating their efforts to breed their captive populations. At Zoo Atlanta, Laurie Perkins maintains the orangutan stud book. Well, being a, being a stud bookkeeper for the orangutans involves keeping track of all of the events in the population worldwide. To ensure healthy populations, zoos keep records of genetic relationships to avoid problems associated with inbreeding. Well, what we do in order to, uh, to ultimately end up with a baby, um, you start with an, a genetic analysis of the, of the stud book data and we go through and we run a series of programs that have been written especially for the management of small populations but the stud book is only the starting point a tool to help keepers decide who should mate with whom the next step is up to the orangutans and they are individuals with their own personalities and interests They also have a complex social system, a way of life that evolved thousands of years ago in the jungles of Southeast Asia. Chris Warren travels deep into the rainforests of Borneo to uncover the secrets of the orangutan's world. Until recently, it was thought that orangutans were solitary, and that is largely true. But studies have shown that their lives are just not that simple. To some degree, they are social animals with an intricate and extremely complex society. Females and their young stay together for many years, and adolescents often travel together. Each orangutan knows the other individuals in their area and may communicate with them in subtle ways. But adult males are truly solitary, spending their lives completely alone, except when it's time to mate. This male isn't old enough to breed, but he is developing a relationship with a young female. As adults, breeding pairs spend days with each other, but soon the male returns to patrolling his territory alone. A 
Understanding orangutan society is an integral part of all conservation efforts, both in the rainforest and in zoos. Most animals in zoos are, are kept in, in, a, in a natural social environment and um, the orangutans have been a made exception because they do appear um, to, in captivity to increase their sociability, in which they do to some extent. Um, but here at Perth Zoo we believe there's a limit to that sociability and um, keeping them in large groups can lead to long-term problems such as long-term stress. Though Perth Zoo in Australia has chosen to raise orangutans in small groups, many other zoos find that these apes can adapt well to larger ones. Each zoo must evaluate their own orangutan space and finances in order to maintain a healthy population one more way of ensuring that there will always be a new generation. Here at the Perth Zoo, Puan is about to have her 11th child at age 40. You are about to witness the birth of one of the world's rarest animals. After about six hours of labor, a newborn orangutan enters the world. The camera crew spent 10 weeks, 24 hours a day, waiting for this amazing moment. This is the first time an orangutan birth has been captured on film. What does the future hold for the magnificent red ape? Their fate is in our hands. Today, efforts to save orangutans must come from all fronts, in zoos and in the wild. Meet Charlie. He's eight years old. His mother was killed by poachers and he was smuggled to Taiwan to be sold in the pet trade. Eventually, he was confiscated and taken to the Wanarasset Rehabilitation Center. After years of rehabilitation, Charlie, with a group of other rescued orangutans, was released back into the wild. After a difficult and brutal childhood, Charlie is now back where he belongs and doing fine on his own. Though much of the orangutan's habitat has been destroyed, there are still some lush forests left for them to live in. Wanarusset releases their orangutans into these remote protected areas. Charlie is only one of many success stories.
Guana Russet is one of the most important orangutan rehabilitation projects in the world, yet it operates on a shoestring budget. The current financial position uh, is not very good. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, today we may have money for another 10 days of operation of the station, so there's no buffer whatsoever. So far we have not gotten any significant support of any international organization involved with uh, nature conservation. The children of Indonesia are some of Wana Russet's biggest supporters. They helped raise the funds to get this program started. People can donate money to sponsor an individual orangutan and receive updates on the internet. Though there is little money in this developing country for wildlife conservation, the government is trying to help protect these apes. To gain international support, visiting politicians are brought to Wanoreset. Every trade is illegal, and in Indonesia they have been protected since 1925, and only the president himself can give his signature on a permit to have an orangutan. Not even the Minister of Forestry is allowed mm -hmm. to give a permit for somebody to have an orangutan. So they're all illegal. I'd like to introduce you to little Constance. He's four months old. Baby orangutans like Constance, rescued from the pet trade, are brought to Wanarusset with the hope that someday they will be released back into the wild. But many arrive in very bad shape. Constance not only lost her mother to poachers, she came in with a severe parasitic infection. She died soon after this film was completed. But fortunately, Many orangutans do make it to that momentous day, one which they spend years waiting for. In April 1997, that day finally arrived. These orangutans are about to be set free. One russet has found that it's best to release groups into rainforests where there are no wild orangutans. Now if you put these rehabilitant orangutans back into a wild population, you run into trouble. And we quickly found out what the troubles are. You may have heard that the orangutans can suffer all the human diseases that we can suffer. So if we would release one of those diseased animals into the wild, we would do unrepairable damage to them. Wana Russet does all it can to ensure that the orangutans they release are disease-free. Each one is checked regularly during their rehabilitation. Then there is one final thorough exam before the release. The staff must take blood samples, a difficult process when a patient built of pure muscle doesn't want to cooperate. They're about four to five times as strong as humans of an equivalent size age. Incredibly strong. And combine that with having feet that are like hands, and yeah, human beings are just at a loss, <laughs> really. No matter how many precautions are taken, there's always the possibility that an orangutan is harboring a disease that was not detected. The general consensus is that, um, that orangutans that come into the reintroduction centre are to be released in forest that is suitable but does not have a wild population. Finally, when everyone has passed their medical exam, it's time to move out.
One by one, they are carried from their cages, completely unaware of how drastically their lives will soon change. They must be placed in special cages which will be used to take them to the jungle. There is no easy way to transport 26 very strong and very frightened orangutans. Terrified and confused, they cling to the staff. As traumatic as this procedure must be, it is the only way to give these orangutans their freedom. Hey Ben. Huh? Some of them are too aggressive to take out of their cages without a little help. The staff uses a blowpipe to inject a tranquilizer. The orangutans seem to be aware that something unusual is about to happen. Agitated and afraid, they huddle together for support. At first, the darts keep hitting the animals and bouncing off. As you can see, the the ones that we are using are not as good as the ones you buy commercially, so it's all improvising with this material. Again, one broke loose, the tip. We put in an order for a uh, hundred of those new injections, but it takes so long for the stuff to arrive here. So we had uh, to make our own injection uh, tubes now, which is a little bit more difficult. They do work, but um, uh, hopefully those shipments will come in someday. Eventually, they are all sedated and carried down to join the others for the next phase of their journey. The staff has to keep an eye on these clever primates. Orangutans are notorious escape artists and have been known to find their way out of their enclosures. One more. The staff will stay with the frightened orangutans overnight to make sure they don't escape and to try to reassure them. The next day, before daybreak, 
the long trip to the jungle begins with a 50 mile drive on bumpy roads. The release team heads into the nearby mountains. Here there are still patches of isolated, pristine rainforest. When they get to their first destination, the staff discovers that some of the orangutans have broken out of their cages. The broken cages, they broke the cages, so want to move them. To they are placed into cages with some of their friends and then the entire group proceeds on the next leg of this unusual expedition the orangutans will be taken by helicopter in two shifts traveling about one mile deep into the forest. They are given some water and a little Valium to calm them down. Then they are wrapped into a bundle for the airlift. They will have to be carried underneath the helicopter, so they must be wrapped tightly and securely. Though it will be a short journey, this precious cargo has to be prepared with utmost care. Just before liftoff, Willie gives them one last check and offers them a moment of reassurance. Bye bye. Fortunately, there are still patches of forest that can be used for reintroduction. This group will be taken to the Maratus region of eastern Borneo. Here, there are no wild orangutans, and it's relatively isolated from people. There is still one last leg of their journey to freedom. <laughs> they must now be carried into the interior of the jungle. They are placed into carrying cages and taken one by one on the shoulders of volunteers. Though it's only about one mile to the release site, it is a difficult, slippery trek into thick jungle, each team carrying about 250 pounds. The orangutans are left in a holding facility to recover from their arduous trip and to get used to the sounds and smells of their new home.
It is early morning, one week later. Finally, it's time to give the orangutans their freedom. It's going to be the last time I see them this close in their eyes. From now on it will be binoculars. It will tell me what's in their eyes. At first, only a few venture out to explore. The rest are coaxed out by the smell of fresh pineapple. They will be fed here for the first few months, but then they will have to fend for themselves. The staff will continue to monitor their progress as they adjust to this new freedom. Yet it's amazing how quickly they make themselves at home. So this little fellow here is acting up as if he's the boss in the yeah. forest here. Yeah. The throwing and breaking the branches, which is only a behavior for dominant males, but he hasn't been around with a real big one yeah. in a fight and felt their strength, otherwise he wouldn't risk doing yeah. this. Their jungle skills, like tree climbing, vary greatly, but they're all picking it up quickly. One Arusset has already released 82 orangutans. Now there are 26 more who have been given a second chance. This project, as successful as it is, is not the sole answer to the orangutan's problem, but it is one important and magical part of the solution. There are no quick fixes, no easy answers, but if we want to save our relatives, the people of the forest, we have to protect the forest itself. And if each story and have as happy an ending as this one, there is hope for the future. To learn more about what you've seen on this nature program, visit PBS online at www.pbs.org. Major funding for nature is provided by Park Foundation, dedicated to education and quality television. Major corporate support is made possible by Canon, providing the power of imaging to express your visions at home and work. By Ford Motor Company, each year, parts for our new vehicles are made from more than 50 million recycled soda bottles, enough to cover a 400-acre lake shore to shore. Ford, dedicated to protecting the environment. And by TIAA Craft. For 80 years, the thoughtful choice in financial services for people in education and research. TIAA Craft, ensuring the future for those who shape it.
Nature is also made possible by annual financial support from viewers like you. Video cassette of orangutans just hanging on is available for $19.95 plus $4.95 shipping. To order, call 1 800 336 1917 or write to the address on your screen. This is PBS.